visual technologies are revolutionizing business and humanity. What is visual tech? It's any technology that captures, manages, displays, distributes visual data, typically with computer vision, machine learning, and AI. What's interesting is uh, visual data to us is the whole spectrum, photos and video, but even LIDAR, radar, X-ray, spectroscopy, white light, any visual data is the core of humans. 90% of the data our brains analyze is visual. So for AI to succeed, 90% of the data for AI to succeed will be visual. So what we love about this group and our monthly dinner series, we try to bring together our ecosystem um, of creators, startups, investors, executives in the tech, big tech companies, um, medium brand execs, and computer vision scientists, researchers, and professors. Typically, as you all know, these groups have different events. They're very siloed. And we love bringing everybody together to create the serendipity of inspiring each other, interacting to figure out what technologies the creatives want, um, and big companies collaborating with startups. It's very hard to market because there's so many different uh, variety of sectors. What we love is the, the diversity of this group. The first day is a technology deep dive. The second day is more product and business. These are a lot of the goals here. We want, hopefully, to you, for you to find deals, recruit other people, be inspired, have fun. And actually, many people come up to me and say, yeah, there's, I, I love now coming for the second, third, and fourth year because I see similar people and follow up with what they're doing. We couldn't do this without some great collaborators, Serge Belonghi from Cornell Tech, and Rebecca Paoletti from Cakeworks. They're gonna be coming up uh, as part of the sessions, as moderators, as panelists, and helping MC. Also, obviously, we couldn't do this without our, our fantastic uh, partners. Our gold partners this year is Co2, the hedge fund, and Facebook. Our silver partners are GumGum, Adobe, Immervision, Neuromation, and in our in-kind partners, Google's giving away credits to our winners of the competitions. SVA for the theater, Cornell Tech, Cakeworks, Captor, uh, Exponential View, and VizWorld. Dean over there is going to be creating some good, fantastic graphic art. Um, you've probably seen him in the past years during our sessions, and we'll get it up on stage. This is technical. If you guys need anything, it's also on your program for the password. Let's talk a little bit about LDV Capital really quickly, just so you have a perspective of why we organized this event and why we started uh, in 2014. Um, we invest in people, deep domain, building visual technology experiences and businesses and solutions to big problems. Jan Eric from Mapillary. Um, our team is growing. For the early years, those that know me, it was just me. Um, but now Abby is our director of operations. A little bit of background for me. Six years investing in visual tech businesses. Uh, 18 years, 19 years as an entrepreneur operator and built four visual tech businesses. Some succeeded and some failed. And now I love helping entrepreneurs avoiding my horrible mistakes and doing the things that I did well. Amazingly, this summer we also have four fantastic summer analysts. So we're growing. They're going to help our portfolio companies and help us find great new companies. Additionally, we, we've always had a, a great expert network that we collaborate with for due diligence and for advising our companies. And, and recently we put them up on, on the website and we're promoting them here. Luke and Gail and Serge. Uh, both uh, and Nico is no longer at Apple and Gail is moving on as well. There's even more. Many of these are our investors in our fund. And so there's a win-win with them as well, which is fantastic. What is visual tech? Where are the opportunities? They are across every sector of business and society. It's one of those comments that uh, an entrepreneur sometimes makes to an investor, which we don't like. We ser service everybody in the world. But from an investor's perspective, across all these sectors of gesture, virtual reality, commerce, robots, vision, and understanding the visual data is key to solve problems, basically enabling computers to see. Real high level, there's a lot of logos here, I try to avoid that, but it gives you a perspective of some of our early stage investments. We love meeting you months before you're about to start a business. 
We were early in Clarify and continue investing. We were early in Mapillary, Sea Machines, Autonomous uh, Maritime, and other companies. Those are our follow-on investors, which we're very focused on trying to help get great top-tier investors to collaborate. And fortunately, they look to us for some guidance on the domain expertise that we and our network has. The platform. What's unique is how do we exponentially empower our community and our portfolio uh, with the Vision Summit and our monthly dinner series, which has 30 people that comes together. We're happy to invite you folks, uh, half men and half women at every dinner, and the goal is helping each other succeed. These are the kind of initiatives that I wanted when I was an entrepreneur. Okay, jumping into uh, kind of an intro keynote, which will talk about a couple trends that we're going to hear later today. Actually, I'm going to go back. So edge computing, video computation, and synthetic data will transform visual tech and impact society. Last summer, we did a research project which uh, amazed a lot of people and amazed us. We estimated how many cameras will be in the world in 2022. There'll be 45 billion at least. Um, and that does not include the healthcare industry or the logistics industry. This summer, we're going to do more research, and any experts out there that want to help us and be a part of that would be great. Some of the results, the growth, you might not, this audience might not be surprised about, but it's really amazing, the exponential growth. And where these cameras are going to be, many are going to be on your smartphones, on your handheld cameras, but they're going to also be all over the place from robotics, security, um, and many other sections. This is going to continue, and a big part of it is the depth capture. So multiple cameras on every device, not just one. When we think of a camera, uh, soon uh, many of our camera phones will probably have dozens of, of actual sensors. And when this number is the actual sensor, we don't call it a camera like the old DSLRs, which are going to be extinct pretty soon, but it's any sensor that captures any visual data. Here's some more of the breakdown. And this research, you can download it from our uh, ldv.co website. It's a free download, so check it out. Basic conclusion is the ecosystem is driven by visual tech and the integration of cameras. The business opportunities are tremendous in many different sectors. And that's one of the things we love about this summit is bringing together unique experts in different verticals that are very diverse and give insights about how they're solving problems by analyzing visual data. Let's take a look at one of the sectors that have exponential growth coming up soon, which is visual sensors. This is the classic 1975 first digital camera. We've seen this, but putting in context, it's pretty crazy. It was 0 0.01 megapixel. Um, there's quite a lot of evolution from 2002 to 2011. They continue to get smaller and smaller and smaller. The iPhone 10 obviously had several different types of cameras and infrared and uh, different illuminators to start capturing 3D. Microsoft just announced their new depth camera. They called the Microsoft AI enabled edge camera. Interesting how they use the same keywords or I use the same keywords as them. Those trends are going to change a lot. So how do we capture images at the edge? Flat cam is going to uh, compete in our ECVC today, in our Entrepreneurial Computer Vision Challenge. On the left is a flat cam which they're creating out of Rice University. On the right is a traditional or today's traditional camera. How about this size of a camera, which another group is, is, is leveraging for the microscope? Same division of kind of rice, but fascinating that I tried it, I put it on my finger the other day, it's absolutely tiny. Takes different pictures, but we'll see. We're honored to have Eric Fossum, who's the inventor of the CMOS imaging chip, um, um, which is now pervasive across all of the devices we're talking about. And I'm excited to have a fireside chat with him today, and he's going to talk about GigaJot, which is a new, new startup that he's working on. This is an example of it, and we'll talk more about it later. So how to count every photon rather than a selection of photons from uh, the CMOS imaging chip. Big changes. So now let's think about this. If this is being worked on now, how will this impact business in three, five, and ten years? The whole technology stack from the edge to the end user is going to drastically change, and I can't wait for that. And that's why we love investing in this space. Here's a perspective. 
53 billion pixels stitched together to do this, an advertisement for Bentley, okay? Just think about the potential if you can capture one image from a gigapixel far away to be able to zoom in. This is obviously a little unrealistic yet, but this is coming. And it's really amazing of how this is gonna impact autonomous vehicles, how it's gonna impact medical imaging. How is it gonna impact when we, we can swallow uh, pill cameras that are not the size of a pill, but that travel around our blood in real time? Edge computing very quickly. We know about edge computing. There's devices everywhere in all of our pockets and all of our bags at home. They'll all have sensors. What we call the internet of eyes will be larger than the internet of things. Light intelligence, we'll speak later. Here's a bunch of companies that are actually accelerating artificial intelligence with light. So when you think about visual tech, this is not the traditional visual tech. People say, oh, it's not photos or video, but it's photonic imaging. So it is imaging, and those are the companies that we want to meet and we want to collaborate with to improve uh, business and society. Talk about video computation a little bit. Traditional image recognition, obviously a dog and a cat. Okay, but what happens when a computer tries to analyze what's going on here? Are they fighting? Are they friends? Are they playing? Does he want food? I, you know, obviously Evan, you know, the cliche Evan is putting cats and dogs on, on the screen, but that's kind of typical with the content these days. Here's another one. I mean, what is happening here? Okay, and how is a computer going to know and describe what's happening and send a text to the owner that the fish is dead? I, you know, I don't know. But that is an opportunity for computers that hopefully our experts will talk about to share with how are we going to kind of translate this? How do you teach a computer to get that? I don't even get that as a human. Here's another one. Viorica from Google, uh, Google DeepMind will talk more later about massively parallel video nets, which is more technical than I get, and I can't wait to hear about it. And this today, the technical deep dive, I tell the speakers, I want 80% of what you're talking about over my head. So the other very technical folks in the audience can understand what is happening, okay? And how will we teach computers to know what's happening to avoid accidents? And obviously, thanks to Giphy, which is a lead-in shortly to our next fantastic speaker, a bunch of these gifts are, are from Giphy. Here's another one. Okay, we're all excited probably, but also fearful of autonomous vehicles. You know, we could be at a toll booth, right? And all of a sudden, you know, there's not uh, an appropriate occurrence that happens. Okay, so how are we gonna train computers for this edge case, which is gonna be really hard? I can ask my friend Luke from Lyft, but you know, we'll figure out what the answer is to that. Let's talk about synthetic data a little bit. Um, I wrote an article in TechCrunch last week or two weeks ago now, um, kind of a blur on what day today is, aside from the first day of our summit. Synthetic data will democratize the tech industry. The big companies we all know have all of our data. It's a moat, it's a competitive advantage. But what's interesting is that there's gonna be this is gonna be overturned by synthetic data. What is Evan talking about? So real data is photos, video, and the other visual data we talked about earlier. Synthetic data is a computer-generated data. So like a video game or uh, some other simulation of data. So here's the classic uh, Grand Theft Auto plus real images training autonomous vehicles. Now the owners of Grand Theft Auto don't like that, but that's a different issue. Um, here's another example. Amazon Go is going to be a cashless uh, supermarket. And then they bought a Whole Foods, so you can kind of see the writing on the wall of where that's going. This is their patent application, which says there's cameras and microphones everywhere in different type of cameras. Not only is it a cashless checkout, but it's great for inventory management. It's also going to be unbelievable to know exactly the demographic of who buys the candy, the chocolate, the yogurt to be able to market to them or in order to uh, get them discounts to the products that they love without saying anything or writing anything in a computer. The cameras will deliver. Here are examples of the cameras. But what I love, and as far as synthetic data, we're also going to hear from iFi, who has built these animated avatars to simulate people in supermarkets and in uh, warehouses in order to train them 
in a simulated society to train the computers. No real data. They've avoided the cold start of startups in order to make this happen. Here's a fake image. It looks real, but it's a synthetic data image of inventory. Here's another example. We're going to hear from Josh from OpenAI. So in VR, they watched uh, actions of placing blocks, and that VR synthetic data, fake data, trained the robot in the right and the bottom. Fascinating things. Obviously, only certain use cases will be valuable from synthetic data. There's going to be unbelievable synergies between synthetic data and real data. It's not going to replace the big companies. But the unique piece of the puzzle is the competitive advantage that startups now have, they can then go across and, and compete directly with the big companies. In the end, the data that you have for your business is the most important um, moat in addition to your smart algorithms and how you're building the solutions for different use cases. Why now? As I mentioned earlier, 90% of the data um, that our brains analyze is visual. Visual data, as we talked about, is photos and video and all visual. It's core to human communication. More cameras, however, is not the goal. The goal is better understanding our lives and hopefully solving problems. I put this slide up every year as an evolution of kind of, Evan, you're crazy. And I've gotten used to this as an entrepreneur for 18 years and now an investor. These are all the things that I think will happen. Sometimes I'm wrong, but the green ones are sometimes the ones that we're right about. And our goal is to try to be thought leaders and to collaborate with you to figure out where the next generation of disruption is going to be. My photography is the baseline of what we do and the inspiration to investing in visual tech. It's just the beginning. One thing I always say, carpe diem, because it's only about today, tomorrow never comes. Thank you very much. <laughs>